Good afternoon. Let's introduce. I am Nam Gi Chan. Today, I would like to talk about the Busan Port Authority's plan and also the programs that we pursued to build a green and smart port. Here you can see the content of our presentation. So I will begin with the overseas and domestic environmental regulations. And then I will give you a brief state uh, report on the status of Busan port. And then I will touch upon some case examples of green and smart ports around the world. And based on that, I'm going to conclude my presentation with the Busan port strategy to build a green and smart port, as well as future plans. Here you can see the environment regulations overseas. So you can see that more and more stringent regulations are now being introduced. For example, like IMO, it's going to impose stronger limit on the surface content of fuel and promote energy efficiency improvement. So you can see that the threshold of the 0.5% for surface content is going to be was imposed in year 2020. And also, I am a pledge to reduce the GHG emission by 40% by 2030 and 70% by 2050. If you look at the situations in the US, they have come up with the Clean Air Act. And centering around EPA, they have strengthened the restrictions and regulations on the air pollutants. Especially the EPA, um, they conduct the um, survey, analyze and predict emissions, and also come up with strategies to reduce emission. LA Long Beach Port, they have also come up with their own plan for GHG reduction. What about Europe? They came up with a directive on certain air pollutants to set reduction targets. And as a result, the Rotterdam port and Hamburg port, they have established their own sustainability programs to be in line with the recent regulation. Especially the participation of liners are very important in order to make port green. So the Rotterdam port has made policies to encourage shipping lines to participate. And also the Hamburg port, they allow the Euro 5 and 6 engines trucks only to enter the port. And they have also operated the various incentive programs for clean trucks. China. They established their own three-year action plan for cleaner air, and they set the targets for air pollution reduction. Japan, they established the Port 2030 plan, and accordingly, each port is now pursuing environment preservation program. Now, let's take a look at domestic trends. In year 2019, Special Act on the Reduction and Management of Fine Dust uh, went into effect. And as a result, the relevant committee was established. And also, the comprehensive plans were formulated for fine dust management. And also, with regards to the fine dust management, targets and basic directions were set. And in year 2020, Special Act on the Improvement of Air Quality, especially for port areas, uh, was enacted. So it includes the designation of control area for SOX emission and also the low speed navigation and mandatory installation of AMP system. And in year 2021, the first 
master plan for improving air quality port in air quality in port area was established and they have fleshed out the targets for fine dust management and also they do have the goal of achieving 90% participation rate of the vessel speed reduction program by 2025 as well as the installation of AMP for 248 berths and central government established the 2050 carbon neutrality strategy in order to turn the entire current economy to be more environment friendly and low carbon and under this the 10 packs were established so as mentioned by the two previous speakers they both of them emphasize the importance of environment regulations and we are actually faced with the pressing need to reduce GHG and ports are not an exception and we actually have to achieve all these targets earlier than we aim for now let's zoom in the Busan port so the Busan port has grown substantially and as a result currently it is the world's seventh busiest container port with the 22,000 KTEU um, in container volume and in terms of the transshipment, um, Busan port is world's second largest port with the 12,000 uh, TEU. So Busan port consists of old port, which we call North port. And then we have the new port, 25 kilometer away from North port. So the Busan North port represents 31.4% of the cargo volumes and 68.4% of the cargoes are handled in Busan New Port. And we do have the phase plans to move the cargo volumes more and more from North Port to New Port. And here you can see some case examples for green and smart ports around the world. So for shipping and port logistics, new technologies have appeared in order to transform the internal uh, processes of shipping companies and therefore providing better services. For example, like Musk, they do have the real-time container tracking system. Mm, so they established this system for their vision of IoT of the sea and also other um, liners and carriers. They also have similar systems. So the technological uh, trend regarding the shipping and port industry, um, the, you can see that the Singapore's TWAS mega port, that's the exemplary project. So it began in 2015 and it's going to be complete in 2040. It is for the 65 million TEU. So currently Singapore has multiple terminals scattered around the country and they're going to integrate them into one single terminal and port and a lot of latest technologies are going to be integrated. In Shanghai, already back in 2018, they conducted the pilot operation of autonomous trucks and it's going to be soon commercialized. In Norway, Although small in scale, autonomous ships have already started the demonstration project and the port of Rotterdam adopted the IBM's IoT platform already back in 2018 in order to become smart port. So um, port, smart port is to establish um, the digital system, especially based on digital twin. So digital twin is the key piece of the advanced port 
automation and smart uh, system. So already you can see that the Qingdao port and the Shanghai port, they have adopted the completely unmanned operation and the port of retired them already back in the 1990s. They pursued the unmanned operation. And in year 2014, they actually achieved the completely unmanned system. And now based on Industry 4.0, they are striving to establish digital twin port. What about Korea? Uh, we are still in the state of semi-automation. The reason that we could not move on to the full-blown automation is not because of the technological constraints, but because of the issues of supply and demand. So, but the 2.6 phase uh, new port um, that we are going to open soon, this will be the completely unmanned uh, port. Uh, Singapore's TWAS, TWAS port, as you can see, it has the autonomous, um, rather the port has been established to be prepared for autonomous vessels. And they have adopted the cutting edge navigation system. And also from the construction phase, they try to utilize the green energy, environment friendly energies only. And also for operation again, they use environment friendly fuels and energy. As I said, for the construction and the adoption of the ports, they use uh, green energy. And for this, they have established a TWAS port ecosystem to promote um, environment-friendly energy consumption. And also equipped with the latest technologies, they understand data on a real-time basis and also share the data on a real-time basis for more efficient operation. And they also have the platform called Calista. And so surrounding this uh, Calista platform, stakeholders and stakeholders can have the real-time information sharing. And here you can see the picture of the unmanned truck and for immigration procedures and also for entry and release uh, procedures, you can see that the operation is now taking place in an unmanned way without man's involvement. And this is the case of the uh, Rotterdam port in the Netherlands. And they already began the adoption of the automated port system from the mid 90s. And that project finished in year 2014. So mass flux. That this is the newest terminal, and also the APM terminal run by Musk. It has a completely unmanned container crane and operation. So they already completed the unmanned operation system, and currently they are working on digital twin platform to be even more advanced. So for the digital twin platform, I believe that the Rotterdam is the front runner. What about the port of Hamburg in Germany? Again, they enable real-time information sharing and all the stakeholders are connected. So they establish this integrated smart platform which connect all the stakeholders, especially when it comes to the um, port of Hamburg, they do have the multimodal uh, logistic system, and therefore the port transportation is smoothly connected with the railways, barge vessels, and even like online trucks. And all the information are traced and shared in a real time basis. This is the case of the US, the LA port. 
So this is not a newly built terminal. Rather, existing terminal was converted into smart terminal in a phased approach. And gradually, the unmanned operation was introduced. So I believe that this U.S. case um, is something that the Busan port can learn a lot. So you see that the existing terminal still remain, and then they do have the horizontally and vertically positioned key crane. And these cranes and equipment are operated without human involvement. Now I'd like to talk about the digital uh, green, um, Busan port strategy to build green and smart port. And the key centerpiece of the strategy is to build a digital twin platform. The project is led by Busan port and currently the research institutes and other agencies are being involved. And this is a part of the Korean government's New Deal project. So although we were late in starting, but I believe that uh, the project will be proceeded in a pretty fast speed. This is the uh, schematic drawing of the digital twin platform. So for the ship entry and departure, the unmanned berthing and the autonomous operation will be introduced in order to enhance the port productivity. The second goal is to increase port productivity. So through the simulation and the optimization of operations, uh, we set up the optimized schedules for loading and unloading. And third one is about strengthen is is to strengthen connection with hinterland logistics. So currently the whole flow is not really well connected, but we are trying to connect them well. And the fourth one is to establish the data platform for real time sharing, so that everyone involved can receive data on a real time basis. So this development project for the digital twin platform is going to take place in three phases. So and in four areas. So like enhancing port productivity and also strengthening the connection with the hinterland for hinterland logistics as well as enhancing safety for um, entry and departure of ships. And Busan Port Authority, together with the government and private organizations, we are also rolling up our sleeves to develop core technologies for intelligent smart logistics. So, like the, we are now developing technologies to produce lidar sensor within Korea, and using this lidar sensor, we are aiming to build a system which enable real time. Um, data sharing and also the tracking of the cargoes. And also the integrated control center based on blockchain is scheduled for construction. And LPWA, rather than using the land, we are trying to utilize the LPWA, which is sort of the long haul um, a network in order to monitor the state of cargo and as well as the location and storage status and so on. For the unloading equipment, the Busan Port Authority is also pursuing to develop Korean technology to produce that. And also we have placed an order for 55 steep drawing equipment. And the price of the equipment compared with the overseas production, if you produce that in Korea, then the uh, cost of production will go up. But in other phases of the businesses, we can secure profits if we could have the Korea's own technology. So I believe that this will offset some of the losses that we make uh, from cost increase. And next is about the port stiff dooring equipment. 
So LNG, I believe, is just an interim fuel. And in the end, eventually, I think we have to go for electricity. And together with the Korean component companies, we are pursuing R&D cooperation in order to realize the equipment localization. And together with the Government Research Institute, we are also building the autonomous transport equipment. And port cranes currently are operated with human involvement in Busan port. So we are now developing the remote uh, control technology for unmanned operation. A smart logistics center is now being established. And also together with the government, we are developing the resource sharing platform for Busan port. In other words, all the equipment and human resources can be shared uh, based on this platform. And regarding the green technology, in order to reduce the fine dust generation, we are now developing green technology. And also in this era of the transition from fossil fuel to carbon-based economy, low-carbon economy, I believe the various researches and technological developments are required, and Busan Port is actively engaged. So based on the IoT as well as the long-haul network and AI and big data, I'm sure that by 2040, Busan Port will be successfully transferred to become a green and smart port. And with that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.